I'm here with Benjamin Rivers, who is making a horror adventure game called Home. That's a, that's a good way to describe it, yeah. It's uh, it's a little different than a horror adventure game that we've seen recently. Can can you tell us what what's sort of different about it? Yeah, it's a it's a horror game where you you don't die, mm -hmm. but uh, you always think you're going to. <laughs> and it's a horror game where you as a player have to do most of the work because if you're not freaked out, then uh, you might not be as interested. But the more you get into it, uh, the more it'll give to you. Yeah. And this, this is interesting to me because uh, you went with a very simplistic 2D look, which you don't see a lot in horror games. You know, you know, right. so much of horror games are atmosphere. Right. Um, and I guess now most people tend to think of that atmosphere as being like these kind of like really intense 3D visuals. Right. What made you go with the kind of retro 8-bit look? Well, it was an experiment to see if I could actually freak people out without having full 3D, you know, awesome AAA rendered graphics. And kind of like a visual novel, it is supposed to make you think, make you imagine. And the more you do that, hopefully the creepier it'll get. So it is a bit of a, it is a, bit of a test case. Okay, so uh, other than the visuals, how do you sort of build that creepy, fearful mood in people? Well, unlike a lot of games, this one's actually based uh, around a lot of writing. So there is actually a lot of dialogue. And depending on the choices you make, you see different things, read different things. So what I want people to do is, by reading and getting through all this uh, atmospheric sound, for them to start just like when you read a book, uh, to be building up a lot of backstory, a lot of questions, a lot of this atmosphere in their own minds. So there's a lot of blanks that you kind of have to fill in yourself, but it's not like you know that's happening. It's just you're subconsciously doing it. Yeah, that's something that's interesting. I never felt like I was doing something wrong, but I right. did feel like, oh, I think I missed something back there. Oh, right. what would have happened if I didn't go down this ladder or if I had not? picked up right. this particular object. Right. And, and you, I, I'm thinking there are no, there's no way to die in this game, right? But that's right. Okay. Yeah, which is which is weird. And it's, it's definitely the biggest challenge. So the real, the real kind of horror and the real kind of strangeness comes from like, this sort of building sense of, am I doing it right? <laughs> right. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a case because a lot of players, um, want to play the game correctly. Yeah. But the whole point is that there is no way to play it correctly. In fact, the whole point of the story is that the way it ends will make sense to you. But I'm not ever going to come to you and say that's the wrong way to play it or that was the bad ending. Uh, this is actually the biggest, the biggest part of the game and probably one of the biggest challenges. But I want everyone to play it and say, that story made sense. That's the story that I told. But then also to think, wait a minute, did I... I don't know, that's not what I thought was going to happen or this isn't, you know, this isn't what I thought I was going to do. How many different sort of branches are we talking about? Are, are, how many different endings are there? Well, I'm not going to say a specific number because okay. I want people to sort of fill things in a little bit for themselves. There are, there's definitely more than two. It's not just, you know, good or bad. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, there's a variety of things that can happen, but the way it kind of works is that there are a variety of scenarios that are all plausible, but depending on how you act, the game assumes that you're following certain scenarios. Okay. As an example, if you leave one level, the game might be telling you one of 16 to 24 different things, depending on what you've done up mm -hmm. to that point. I did notice that every every sort of section of the game was giving me like a little recap, like right. I have this, I found this, I'm right. worried about this. <laughs> right. And so all that changes depending on where I went and how I did things. Right, so as opposed to saying, well, you did this as a player, so this is what's gonna happen. Uh, I want it to feel like you did this as a player, so the game goes, you know what, that's right. I don't feel so good about this, or I really wish I had gone and looked at that. So it feels like you are putting more onto the game than, than it's giving you. Very cool, and when are we gonna be able to see this, and, and what sort of what platforms are we looking at? It'll be on Windows first, and mm -hmm. then from there, I'm hoping to release it on Mac or other platforms. That's still to be determined. It'll be out hopefully this June, definitely the summer. Okay. June's the date um, that I have in my head. <laughs> and uh, it's gonna be up on, um, on the website to download, and I'm hoping to maybe get some distribution as well. Cool. And if people want to keep up with you in, in the game, where can they go? You can go to BenjaminRivers.com or you can just go on Twitter, uh, at BenjaminRivers, and I post all my updates there. Awesome. Thanks, man. Great. Thank you.